Well, hello, this is Kelly and I am the Mathematic Plumber and welcome to my next video. Today we are going to discuss basic switches used in the plumbing and heating industry. First of all, we should talk about some terminology around switches. Switches can either be in the open or closed position. To illustrate this, we have a couple pictures here. The first one is a simple circuit where I have a battery power source that's going to go through a switch to a light bulb, but the switch is open, meaning no power can flow through it, therefore the light bulb is off. In this next picture, the switch is closed and power can freely flow through it to the light bulb, which makes it light up, and the wire that runs back to the battery, that just completes the circuit. Let's look at some common switches that we come across in our trade. The first one is the thermostat. There are many different types of thermostats, but they all do the same thing. They will measure the temperature of something and turn something off or on because of that. A wall thermostat will turn a furnace on when it gets too cold in the house. Its symbol looks like this. In order to demonstrate this, I've made a little setup here. I've got a 24 volt transformer with a power lead going off to the thermostat. On the other side of the thermostat, a power lead goes out to an LED light. And from the other side of the LED light, the power returns back to the transformer to complete the circuit. Now right now the thermostat is in the open or off position and we can see the LED is off. But when I flip it to the closed or on position, well the LED light comes on and I can turn that off and on just by flicking this lever. The next type of device we come across in the field is called a flow switch. Its symbol looks like this. This is a device that has a sensing element that sits right inside a pipe and when water flows past it, it will turn the switch off or on. Right now it is in the open position and when I flip the switch down by pressing this leaf, the LED comes on, we are in the closed position now. The next type of device we come across in the field is a level sensing switch. A low water cutoff is a really good example of this. We have a ball float in there and when the water from the system gets high enough, the ball floats up and the switch is closed. Notice that the LED light came on. This is useful in boiler systems where we want to protect the boiler from having low water conditions. And the last type of switch that we come across in the field is called a pressure switch. And this is what its symbol looks like. We can find pressure switches in a couple different scenarios. The first is on a furnace where it's actually measuring the pressure of an induced draft. Or it could also be found in a well pump system to power up the pump as needed to draw well water up from the ground and put it inside the pressure tank. Another type of switch that we do come across in the field is called a relay. Now this is an electronic switch as in we need to actually power up this device to make it flip a switch all by itself. Now this is extremely handy when we have a couple different voltage sources that we want to control. Now I will not be going into great detail on how a relay works in this video. But the idea would be I have a 24 volt transformer with a 24 volt thermostat and I run a wire from that to a relay. Now on the other side of this relay is a 120 volt pump. So I can use this 24 volt transformer and thermostat to power up a 120 volt pump. Whereas if I just did it directly and wired 120 volts to my thermostat, the thermostat would disappear in a great puff of smoke and it would be very bad. Now if you ever get a little bit scared while dealing with or thinking about electricity, just remember, if an electrician could do it, you should be able to do it way easier. You have yourself a wonderful day.